Hello friends, thank you for joining me. Today we're gonna do a Q&A video. I like cryptically left a message at the end of my most recent video saying that I was gonna do this and to leave the questions in the comments. So if you missed that memo and you would like to ask a question, feel free to leave it in the comment section of this video. Just be sure to mark it with a Q&A at the beginning as you'll see with the questions that are asked in this video so that I know it's for a Q&A and I will happily hit it in my next question and answer video. How soon that is depends on <laughs> how interested all of you are in this. Today I have a cocktail with me. I have a paper plane cocktail, one of my favorite modern classics. It is absolutely delicious. If you've never had one, I highly recommend trying one if you like a nice cocktail. If you keep a basic arsenal of bottles in your collection, you probably have 75% of this cocktail. It's equal parts bourbon, Aperol, lemon juice. The tough to find ingredient is called Amaro Nonino. I'm sure there's plenty of options that you can use in place of that, but to make a true paper plane, that's what is called for. And it is absolutely delicious. Alrighty, let's get right into today's video. In the comments, this one is from Heather Troynak. Hello, Heather. I dream about what it would be like to have a property with garden rooms, a greenhouse, and a home with a conservatory style room. None of it is fancy in my mind, cozy and comforting and doable. What do you dream about as your most perfect environment for you and your plants? That is a really good question. I don't foresee my entire life being like what I'm living in right now, where I'm just kind of living in my cacophony of plants. I know cacophony is sound, but that's just how it's, I, I can hear these. It's coming off like a sound, they're everywhere. And it's messy. And while it's like what I'm into right now, because I plan on living in a city, whether it's Philadelphia or not, my entire life, I don't see myself really having like a yard and all of that. And I know in some areas in the city, you can possibly have that, but for what I see for me and what fits my lifestyle, I don't think I'm necessarily gonna have that. So what I see for me, my perfect setting ideally, is having like a nice apartment, condo, whatever it is, that hopefully has a couple extra rooms because I would like to decorate my home not like I'm decorating it right now. That's how I see like living the bulk of my life. Like I love like my staghorn fern on my wall and like a well-placed snake plant and my Schifflera Nova that we were hanging out underneath. So I'm just making sure there's like no mealybugs or anything that are gonna fall into my delicious cocktail. I want a well-placed plant like this just taking over the space, but just like one large plant in one corner instead of like a whole corner that I have right now. A little bit more minimalistic, but still a lot of plants, just not nearly as many as I have now, probably like 10% of what I have right now, ideally. But then what I would also like is one room in the home that gets really good light, whether it's a sunroom or not, it could even just be like a room that I just like take over as my own. And that's the plant room that's just like decorated to the nines in the way that I want to with plants and like that full like bohemian vibe. And I feel like that's gonna be probably like a trade off if I'm living with a partner, which I'm very single right now, but I could imagine <laughs> someone not necessarily wanting to live with hundreds of plants. So I think that's an excellent trade off. Having my one room where I can just go crazy with it and throughout the rest of the house is just some like well placed, tasteful plants that really add to the aesthetic. And plants like my staghorn fern and the Schifflera, I think really get the job done in that sense. So that's how I'm feeling about that. A very good question. April says, hello, April. What first got you started in plants? Happy New Year. Happy New Year too. I know we're kind of, you know, a little ways in the year now, but happy New Year, April. What first got me into plants? I always did like fruit and vegetable gardening and like herb gardening with my father growing up just for like a couple of years when I was in elementary school and then I kind of just like wasn't my interest anymore but I was like head over heels for it for a couple of years fell out of interest in it when I was going into my teenage years when I was in college I wanted to get back into it and I had like a small herb garden in my apartment when I was like 19 or 20 years old and one of my neighbors came over for the first time we actually ended up living together a couple of years later which was actually a lot of fun I it was a good experience. But when she first came into my apartment, the first thing she said was, why don't you have any plants? And I was like, I have my little herb garden. She was like, no, like you need a plant, a house plant. So we went back to her apartment and she 
uh, like pulled an aloe out of her aloe plant. She had like a mother aloe that had a bunch of babies. Actually, I still have it. Let me grab it. It's a total nightmare. I <laughs> need to clean it off. There's like so many mealybug on it that I'm noticing now on all the dead foliage, which is obviously super easy to clean up. But yeah, this is my first house plant that I ever got. It's grown immensely. This is the whole like main mother plant right here. I'm pretty sure that's just like trying to jump ship out of the pot as aloes tend to do once you've had them for a couple of years. But I've had this since I was 19 or 20 and I think 20 years old and I'm 28 now. So I've had this for roughly eight years, good amount of time. You would think with eight years, it would look a little bit better, but it's been through it. <laughs> it's, wow, it's really heavy. It definitely weighs a couple pounds. I'm surprised this thing isn't like tipping over. But yeah, it was a slippery slope from there. My boyfriend at the time, every weekend I'd ask him when he was visiting if we could go plant shopping. And at first it was like, you wanna go again? You wanna buy another one? But then he learned to accept it and it was just like a regular thing. Before I knew it, I had like a hundred plants in my apartment and that's when I started making my YouTube videos roughly five years ago. And here I am now with this busted aloe. Oh goodness, I really do need to clean this up. I think most of my first couple of plants that I've even had are all dead, but that aloe is still hanging on for dear life. It's definitely gone through many phases of neglect. I think it's been experiencing one now because I can't find a good spot for it in my home. It's been kind of like living on my bench for a while. It's kind of like the last plant that I've been trying to find a spot for, but we'll find it eventually. Jungle Jelly says, have you ever had any fertilizer related fails? I almost killed my chain of hearts when I gave it some last spring. In fact, it's still on the brink of death and I still don't know what I did wrong. Sad face. You know, I don't think I've really ever had a fertilizer related fail and I think that's really because I'm not really that good at fertilizing my plants. I definitely don't fertilize them enough. In fact, I think a lot of my plants are suffering from malnutrition and really could be fertilized a little bit more. Even in the winter time, probably they're that depleted. So I can't say for certain, but I would say with a chain of hearts, so a string of hearts, I'm pretty sure that's a string of hearts, that those are pretty light feeders. So I could imagine over fertilizing going wrong very quickly. I would be very light with those kinds of succulents. But I feel like if you are having fertilizer issues, I don't really know exactly what the issues are you're having with your plant, but that would be like leaf burning from all like the salts and chemicals in the fertilizer that the plants are kind of expelling out of their leaves from being over fertilized. So yeah, that's my, that's my two cents on that. USA 45 says, just wondering what your experience has been with crime in your city. I live in Philadelphia, by the way. How do you feel about that? And are you planning to move to a different city? Gracias. I have, had a fine experience. I have never had a bad experience here in Philadelphia. I can't speak for everybody who lives in Philadelphia, but me and my friends, I don't think any of us have had any experiences with crime as far as I'm aware. So I feel fine about that. Moving to a different city, I couldn't imagine living my whole entire life in one city for me personally. I would love to move to another city one day. I don't plan on doing it in the next couple of years but I absolutely would love to try out another city in the future, maybe even a couple. Who knows where life will take me. I could imagine trying out like Chicago and New York, somewhere local, not too far, <laughs> local, not too far away. Like I wouldn't want to jump ship and go like all the way across the country yet. But yeah, absolutely would love to try that out. I think it would keep things spicy. Hello. I'm obsessed with these like automated answers to comments that they give you. I'm gonna have to screenshot this so I can put this on screen. <laughs> Nick is back. This is the first video in a little while that you've got your spunk and feistiness back. Glad to see it. More to come. Indeed it is. You know it. Thank you, Jay's Planty Journey. Not necessarily a Q&A question. Glad to hear it. You're glad to see it, I'm glad to hear it. More to come. Indeed it is. Hagrid's mom says, do the rhizomes on a ZZ plant send up leaves on their own? I just purchased one that appears to have leaves coming up out of nowhere. I originally thought that they were leaves that have been stuck back in the dirt and have rooted, but they are much too firmly attached to support that thought. It was suggested to me that they came up from the rhizome, but there's no stem. Thank you. I love your videos. Oh, thank you very much. I'm confused by when you say leaves coming up out of nowhere? Do you mean just like a single leaf 
like coming up out of the soil because one leaf wouldn't just come up out of the dirt that would be already there like propagated that's how a lot of the garden centers or like the growers that the garden centers purchase from will propagate their zz plants by just using single leaves and just growing them out over time or just like nuking them with fertilizer so if it's just a leaf stuck in the soil that was either propagated there or it fell off your plant i have had plenty of times where a leaf has fallen off my plants or i knocked a leaf off a healthy leaf and when it gets to the soil it roots up and those would create rhizomes but if anything if they were creating leaves it would be a set of two it wouldn't just be one leaf coming out it would be a little tiny little stem and two little leaves on the stem uh, if it was coming out of the rhizome Chris Farnsworth says, what is your process for planting a wall pocket, like the odd-shaped ones that can't hold a nursery pot? What do you do about drainage? Let me grab one and let's see if that's what you're talking about. Are you talking about this sort of thing? I had a bunch of these up on my wall in my old place. I only have one in my current apartment. <laughs> the other three plants died that I have, so I just have the wall pockets right now, but I absolutely love these. I think it's such a fun way to grow your plants. This one in particular, did not have a drainage hole, so I drilled a hole in the back of it. And because I was worried about not only water coming out the hole, well, I'll normally like pull them off the wall and then water them in the sink, and then once it dries, I'll put it back. But just, you know, worried about moisture in general from the ceramic and the hole, I put a little piece of adhesive felt. You could even use just like furniture pads. This was just adhesive felt that I cut up like a big sheet. Uh, but furniture pads are perfectly fine just to keep the walls safe. I'll do this in a lot of my mounted plants. If you're talking about like the felt pockets one, I don't really know how to work that in the home. I would not put that on the wall. That would damage it for certain. But these ceramic wall pockets with the felt pads not had an issue whatsoever with it damaging the walls. My process for planting it up though, I just plant it up like normal. Well, I'll take a plant if it's in like a four inch nursery pot and I would kind of like peel it apart from the center, like out to make it like lengthwise. If that's not really the word I'm looking for. Make it long, like hot dog. It's not hamburger. I don't really know. I would literally just like rip the plant in half and basically just have like the two halves side by side so it can be uh, longer and take up less space. Obviously you couldn't really fit something that's like super, like a very well-rooted pothos in a four inch pot probably would not work out. But like a Hoya, that doesn't have as robust of a root system typically when you buy it in a four inch pot would definitely fit in here, no problem. Does that answer your question? I hope so. These paper planes are delicious. The Amaro Nanino is like, unfortunately and unnecessarily like $50. So if you happen to make these at home and you have a good replacement, let me know. Cause I can't even buy it in Pennsylvania. I have to leave, which is not that difficult because Philadelphia is right next to New Jersey, but still. I see a queue here with Amelia Murphy. Hello, Amelia. I was homesick today, feeling miserable. Oh, honey, I hope you're feeling better. And you made me smile throughout the entire video. Okay. <sighs> okay, I'm feeling better now. <laughs> so glad this... Oh, thank you very much, sweetie. When you decide to do plant chores, how do you decide what to do first? Well, I water first because that's what I'm always most lackadaisical about. I feel like I always realized like two days ago, I probably should have watered all my plants and I will like frantically go around and like water everything, which takes probably like 30 to 45 minutes. It really doesn't take that long. But this is a really good question because it's making me think about what I should be doing more. Like I learned in a video that I was filming earlier today that I need to dust my plants a lot more, especially when they're up on the walls that I have in my new apartment. I know I haven't done a tour yet. I will do a tour at some point in the next month or so. Don't hold me accountable on that. It will be soon. But it's just so much more dusty in this apartment because it's just like bigger and the ceilings are higher and the walls don't go up all the way. That's definitely the killer. So dusting my plants should definitely be more of a priority. But yeah, I don't think I really have a solid answer to that question because I think personally, I just, in so used to having all these plants around that sometimes I don't think about all the chores that are involved and keeping them completely up to crisp perfection. But I'm glad I made you feel better. Ariella Lester says, how did you get Muffin? How did you decide on her name? Oh, thanks. I don't think anybody's actually asked that question before. So my old roommate when I lived in the apartment that I lived in for the bulk of my time here on YouTube, she actually found her. She used to work as a pet sitter. She had recently found her own cat, which was our other cat that we lived with at the time. 
And then within a couple months, she found Muffin living outside one of the homes that she was pet sitting at and she was just too precious to leave. And also it was late October. So like mischief night was coming around and she was just really nervous that like, you know, teenagers in the neighborhood could possibly just have like bad intentions with a black cat around that time. I hope better than that, like genuinely. But she was so scared, she went back she couldn't get Muffin because she's so skittish at first, but she was thinking about this cat and she was like, I can't just leave it. So she went back to go get her with a can of tuna, her weakness, and she was able to capture her, brought her home, and she immediately knew she was my cat. Unfortunately, I was living at the apartment that I first lived at when I first started YouTube. I think actually like just a couple videos into my YouTube journey, I introduced Muffin. But yeah, the ad for my apartment that I was living in said like multiple times, no pets in all caps. So I was like, girl, I can't take this cat. Like I would love to take her, but I, I can't. And after like a week, she couldn't find her home. So she just was like, ask your landlord. And I thought worst thing I can hear is no. I asked him and he said yes, which I was very confused about from the ad. But yeah, that's how I got Muffin. How did I decide on her name? I believe my boyfriend at the time, he, was also like working with pet sitting or he worked at a dog kennel and he would like watch the house and the dogs that would stay there. And the house had a cat named Cupcake and I loved Cupcake <laughs> and specifically her name. And I was just like, I wanna name my cat after a baked good. And I picked Muffin and I probably would have picked something way more stupid <laughs> if I got a cat in the point of life that I'm in right now. But yeah, her name's Muffin. Uh, that's her government name. The name that she most often goes by in my home is Dootsy, <laughs> which I love and am obsessed with. You also ask Ariella, starting to love the apartment or still having issues? So here's the thing. When I found this apartment, I fell in love with it because it's a great apartment. Like the space itself is awesome. I love the neighborhood that I live in. The apartment's huge. Like it's a really good space. It's just not taken care of properly. And it was just like kind of a bamboozlement because you know, the apartment looks great, but then once you're living here, you start to realize the hundred problems that there is with the apartment, more so how the management company doesn't deal with those problems. So we're still having some of the issues. Some of the issues have been resolved, like the hot water finally got resolved last month. So that's great. That was a really big weight on my shoulders, but some of the things are not going to be solvable. It's going to take a lot to keep me here for another year, but moving is such a nightmare. It's going to be really just like weighing all the options, but I do really foresee myself moving out of here in August or September. I considered moving out earlier than that, but I looked into it and it would cost me $7,000. M says, have you considered starting a second channel focusing on mixology? I would watch it. Thank you. I appreciate that. I have considered that. I have an idea, I don't know if I want to talk about in this video, I might talk about it, but um, no, but yes. So the thing is, my channel here is just called Nick Pelleggi. It's not like plants with Nick Pelleggi, but I've been making plant videos on this channel for the last five years, so I'm not about to jump ship on that. Just maybe there is a way to combine the two. I don't know, maybe we'll figure it out or something pretty soon. But I would consider it, I absolutely would. I think it's something that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm absolutely not opposed to it. I would absolutely consider it. It's just wasn't in my thought process at the moment. Second cue, any wish list plans for 2023? No, actually, I haven't even thought about a wish list in so long. I feel like a lot of the plants that I acquire or that I've been acquiring for like the last, like, six months to a year, I feel like have been mostly like project related. I feel like if any plants that have been like on my wish list have been like through like unboxing videos. So I haven't really thought about that in a long time. I've been mostly getting rid of plants. I've gotten rid of so many plants since I've moved here just because it's just been a weight off my shoulders, especially like I said, if I plan on moving later this year and again, <laughs> and moving my plants is just such a nightmare. Adding plants really isn't part of my thought process right now, unless it's for a project. So no, although I will say I did really enjoy, I've seen it a couple times at one of my local houseplant stores and I just haven't picked it up yet. Uh, it's called the Anthurium vitolorifolium. Don't 
quote me on that. I did not pronounce it even remotely correctly. It's like the long, strappy leaved, like Salvador Dali type anthurium. It's such a nice hanging basket plant. I'd love to try it, but it's just not really in the books for me right now. I don't have a spot where I put it. I want to make sure it can go to its full potential. And between you and me, <laughs> I've killed a couple of my anthuriums in the past couple of months. They have not been obsessed with me in the way that I'm obsessed with them. My New Year's resolution is to not fall in love with any straight people. <laughs> I feel you, Kayla. Actually, I don't really have that issue, but I'm here for you. Julie Valencourt says, since you've done so many fern on wall planks, how often do you redo them to change their inner soil? Not very often. I don't even keep soil inside them. I mostly just de-soil them. I shake them all off and then don't know what that was. And then I cover them in sphagnum moss and tie them to a board. However, I will usually retie them, like my staghorn fern. I know I retied recently in the last year or so. I would tie them and like we'll, we'll place some of the moss on them like once every two years I'd say. Cindy also asked about the issues with my apartment. Thank you for your concern, Cindy. And asks as well, when you bring a new plant home, do you quarantine the plant from the others? I don't think it's necessarily that I quarantine my plants from the others. I think it's that I make sure I put them somewhere where they would acclimate well. In my old home, I would leave them on my counter for like a week or two. In this home, I would probably put them on my coffee table that's in a pretty brightly lit area, also not around that many plants. So technically, yes, I guess, kind of quarantining. But I don't do it intentionally in like the sense of keeping pests away. It's more just to wait for it to grow a nice new leaf before I throw it in some random corner of my home that I can't guarantee is gonna have all the light requirements that the plant is going to need to grow to its fullest potential. What do you use for fertilizer for your plants growing in semi-hydro or plain water? I don't fertilize them, Christina K. In the water, that is. I use like the spray orchid fertilizer because everything that I'm personally growing in hydroponics, like the semi-hydro, is a Hoya. So, or very closely related to a Hoya. So they appreciate that like foliar uh, fertilizer. So yeah, I'm not putting anything in the water I don't think I'm the right person to ask for that, if that's what you're looking for. But yeah, I just spray the leaves and I haven't had an issue just with the standard orchid spray. Are you currently considering gardening vegetables and fruits outside? Tammy, hello Tammy. No, I don't have, I have a courtyard in this building, but it's not like the way that I had a courtyard in the building I lived in a couple years ago where I like had like full rain on the courtyard because I only had like three other neighbors to worry about. I have a lot more neighbors in this building to worry about, so I'm not gonna like take over the courtyard in the sense of that. So I will not be growing any fruits and vegetables and growing them inside, I don't really have good luck with. It's a pest magnet. I will grow a pot of herbs on my kitchen counter for like two weeks or three weeks, but the second there's a spider mite on that plant, it gets thrown out and I will go to the store and spend $2 on a new one. I wish I had an option to do so. I think that would be very fulfilling, but just in my situation in the city, it's not really the most approachable thing. Tyler Brown asks, where did you get your inspiration for interior design? I've always been blown away by your apartments. Thank you very much, Tyler. I really appreciate that. I'm really just inspired by the plants themselves. Like I want my furniture to invoke a natural feeling. I feel like I gather that from a lot of wood. Earth tone is the name of the game, but I think you can kind of go beyond that. Like I love reds, greens, and yellows, and you can really do a lot with a full range of colors. And even like a lime green can be earthy enough if you combine it with like with a plant. If it's a lime green planter or like a lime green linen or something like that, it very well can go very earthy. Even if it's surprisingly bright of a color, it can fit in and really add a nice pop. But I think I'm just getting off topic now. I don't think I'm really like looking at like magazines or anything like that. I mean, who looks at magazines anymore? Sorry, if you look at magazines, I apologize. But I'm not looking at like any social media. I feel like I also really took a lot with me from my time at Urban Jungle, merchandising and all that stuff the way that we would lay out the store and the things that we use to lay out the store. I think I was really inspired by that and I picked up a lot of little like knickknacks when I worked there. No furniture pieces by any means, but I feel like I definitely did take some of my inspiration from that location as well. If we're also on that vibe, I also really love 
terrain for inspiration. It's totally like corporate, and you know, my Urban Outfitters, which is like kind of a bummer. They do a really, really good job. It's a local store. I know it's not like local. Like I said, it's Urban Outfitters. It's local to Philadelphia. There's like a couple locations right around Philadelphia. I don't think they're in that many other states other than Pennsylvania. I think they might have a couple like California and Connecticut locations. Don't know more much about it than that but uh, they do a really good job at just walking through the store. You don't have to buy anything because it's ridiculously overpriced, but you will get a lot of inspiration. So yeah, I guess we had to dig a little bit more deeper on that, but I do totally get inspiration from places. I think I'm learning now, I get most of my inspiration from plant stores. Thank you very much for feeling blown away by my apartment, so that really means a lot to me, Tyler. D Grows asks, do you talk to your plants? Not unless they're being bad. <laughs> No, I don't talk to my plants. Should I be talking? Like, I'm sure they're listening to me. And if I had words, it would only be words of encouragement. Like, you're so sexy. That's not what I say to my plants. No, I don't talk to my plants. But now I feel like I should be. Because I remember that whole, like, Ikea experiment. But, like, honestly, I don't know how real that was. Noel Timberlake, any relation to Justin, asks, why do you not use humidifiers? Does not doing so keep you from getting certain plants? You know what? I don't use a humidifier out of complete laziness. My old humidifier got gross. I've also like never been enthralled by any of the companies of humidifiers that have like reached out to me. I know a lot of other influencers have worked with these humidifier companies, but they all just kind of seem like random companies out of China that just like make like bullshit humidifiers. And yeah, I just never got around to purchasing one. Never felt like representing a brand that I don't feel wholehearted in. I also think that the humidity is fine in like the spring and summer in the home. It's really only in the winter time. And I don't keep enough plants that really need it. Like I've learned with like my anthuriums over the last month or two that like, you know, they kind of require it. And so maybe I'm not gonna grow anthuriums that are, you know, more difficult anthuriums to grow anymore. And probably not gonna be purchasing any calatheas. I'm having some issues with my tenanthi right now that was doing fabulously. And now I think it might be a little too dry, but it's not keeping me from my hobby or anything. It's just keeping me from having the best skin that I possibly could have. <laughs> Also, your top three, I totally skipped over that. Aspidistra, Syngonium erythrophyllum, and Ficus chivariana. Ficus chivariana would be a really fun one to grow. I've had some really good luck with my Ficus elastica. Is that Ficus elastica? I'm pretty sure it's a hybrid or variety of it. I've had some really good luck with those over the years. I really love them. I think my two variegated ones that I have, I gave away all my other non-variegated ones and all of my moves in the past. But my two variegated ones, I could never get rid of. I feel like eventually they're going to be plants that grow up to my ceiling that I'm going to have like 20 years from now. Psyche Ready asks, what is your dream planty job? I don't know. I feel like my like dream like a couple years ago, can't say if it is now. I always wanted to get like my own store and have like a greenhouse on the roof and just like spend all my time like in the greenhouse, just like cultivating shit and then just like, you know, pop down in the store whenever I feel like, but I don't really know if that's what I feel like doing anymore. Yeah, I don't know, but that's my answer to those questions, psyche ready. Alicia asks, what is your favorite go-to cocktail? Hey, Alicia, that is a good question. I love trying new cocktails all the time. I'm literally always messing around with cocktails. Now, as always, with my New Year's resolution, I've been really sticking to it, I will say. But if I am just in a regular everyday mood, if I want something that is like tart or sweet, I will make some type of margarita. I have like a hundred margarita recipes. I should literally write, I'm not credible enough nearly, but if I was to write a cocktail book, I would write a book all about margarita and tequila recipes because I literally have like a hundred of them. <laughs> Yeah, so margarita if I want something tart and sweet, but if I want something on the drier and bitter side, I'm going to make a Negroni hands down. Just a plain Negroni. I'm not here for the whole Spagliato trend, even though it tastes totally fine. A regular Negroni, it's like the grapefruit juice of liquor. And I love grapefruit like from a child, just like cutting it up in the wedges and just like sucking it down over the sink. No sugar, never, never any sugar. Like, 
It's my biggest no-no. You're allowed to like sugar in your grapefruit for me. It's just, it's just a big no. But thank you for that question, Alicia. I always love getting asked a nice little cocktail question. That is a cool plant. Nova. Yeah, it is, girl. Madam Plant, you know it. I feel like we're probably starting to near the end of the question. What plant have you killed most but are determined to grow? This is asked by Kelly's Hoyas. Hello, Kelly. Mm. I know there's like a definitive answer to that question, like a specific plant that I just like won't give up on, but I know it's probably a peperomia. There's so many peperomias that I'm just like, will absolutely not give up on because I love them. And like, they're pretty inexpensive where it's like, I'll try it again. Why not? I know as soon as I'm done filming this video, I'm going to think of one in particular. I know like peperomia versus feltii. That's one I've tried like a bunch, never to any success. Same with like obtusifolia. All of those types of peperomia, <laughs> I will try as many times as I can, but I seem to fail every time. I have much more success with trailing peperomia than the like upright growing from like a single stem in like an upright fashion similar to like a self-heading philodendron, if that makes any sense. Stacy Scott asks, what are your thoughts on the IKEA greenhouse cabinets? Have you ever used a humidifier? Love your channel and make cocktails videos, please. Thank you, Stacy May. Stacy May? Oh, Stacy May is your full name. Love that. Stacy May? I don't know. I'm here for it no matter what. I like the greenhouse cabinets. I've never done it myself. It's a little bit more modern than I would like, and I feel like I've been complaining about my IKEA shelves that I keep in my bedroom right now. Uh, they work very well function-wise. They're just not really my aesthetic, but they are so many people's aesthetic, so that is literally just a personal thing. I love the function of the IKEA greenhouse cabinet. I could even consider myself having that in like the room I was talking about in the future, where if I have like a full-ass plant room in my home in place of a guest bedroom, or maybe that would be my guest bedroom or my office, who knows? But I could totally see myself using it in there. I just wouldn't want it necessarily out in my home, it wouldn't look bad and it wouldn't even not necessarily fit my aesthetic. It's just, it's all glass and it's just, I can't with that at the moment. I'm gonna break it. But yeah, I'm a big fan. It's just like always out of stock too, every time I've ever looked. And we just talked about the humidifier. I used to use a humidifier, but I have not been using a humidifier for a couple of years. And I feel like I would be better off with one. I'm just, I've just been feeling kind of lazy on that. Wishing on the Moon asks, what's a plant you were gifted or bought that you weren't a fan of and turned into a plant you love? Oh, I'm looking at it right now. It's looking like it's a little worse for wear, but I got from Steve's Leaves once a spiral ginger. I opened it on my Patreon. I haven't really been making Patreon videos lately, but you can still support me on Patreon if you'd like. If you'd like to support me monetarily, that will be linked in the description. I opened a box of plants from Steve's Leaves on Patreon, and there was a spiral ginger, a costus anus. I was not obsessed with it at the time, but it took maybe 30 minutes for me to become obsessed with it. So that's one. In terms of a plant that's like growing really well, I feel like I have to have a plant that's growing really well that I can say I wasn't, I don't know, I, I want to say the costas. I just wish I was having better luck with it, but that's totally my fault because I just stuck it on the bottom of my bar cart and I don't have as much space for things as I thought here and I'm just I'm doing the best I can, okay? But I do really like that plant and while I feel like I would have better luck growing it outside, I could see myself maybe trying it once more if I stumble across a nice specimen in the future. Mine's not dead, I'm looking at it right now. It's fine, it just, she's not looking hot. Zachary Alger asks, are there any houseplants that you have never been able to successfully propagate? Yes. Maybe not like 100%, but there is definitely plants that I've like struggled hard with. The plant that is coming to my mind specifically is the Monstera stanleyana. I've tried countless times to propagate that. I took like 20 cuttings off of it last year and tried to propagate it and I only got like three of them to root and then I forgot about them. 
<laughs> the mother plant looks great, so I'm not mad about it, but it would have been nice if I turned one plant into 20, like I can do with plenty of my other aeroids, but Monstera stamliana, I don't know, Zachary, I'm having lots of issues with that one. I think that's all of the questions, at least the ones that were marked with the Q&A. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for today's video, our Q&A. Thank you to everyone who asked questions. I always love just kicking back with a little cocktail, a little cocky, and answering some questions, plant-related or not. Like I mentioned, if you would like to ask a question and you did not get my original memo, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Just be sure to mark it with a Q&A like you saw on screen for the entirety of this video. But thank you again for joining me. If you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Philly Foliage. If you would like to support me monetarily, once again, you can subscribe to my Patreon. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It helps me out a lot and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.